Today we're going to explore some cool math for fun. And the subject of this cool math is complex analysis. Specifically, we're calculating residues. More specifically, we're calculating the residues of the gamma function. Now, you've seen me calculate residues for complex value functions for the purpose of contour integration. And those residues are pretty simple to calculate. But it gets interesting when you throw special functions like the gamma function into the mix. So how exactly do we figure out the residues of this very, very special function? Well, for that, we need to know its poles. And to figure out its poles, let's take a look at the Weierstrass definition of the gamma function. So Weierstrass defines the reciprocal of the gamma function, so that's 1 by gamma z, as z times e to the gamma z, where lowercase gamma is the Euler-Mascheroni constant, times an infinite product over the positive integers k of 1 plus z by k times e to the negative z by k. And this expression for the reciprocal of the gamma function is defined, it's valid for all the complex numbers z. Okay, cool. So the zeros of 1 by gamma z are the poles of gamma z. And looking at this equation, we see that the reciprocal of the gamma function is 0 whenever we let z equal to negative k. And of course, if we let z equal to 0 as well. So the poles of the gamma function are all the non-positive integers. And these are all simple poles. So that means we have all the required information for calculating the residues. The residues of the gamma function at z equal to negative k would be the limit as z tends to negative k of z minus minus k times the function in question, which is the gamma function. And that means we're interested in the limit as z approaches negative k of z plus k times gamma z. So how exactly do I evaluate this limit? Well, I could make use of a factor of 1. And what special form of the number 1 do I need here? Well, let me write this out as the limit as z approaches negative k of z plus k times the factor of 1, which is z plus k divided by z plus k. Okay, cool, but how does this even help? Well, let me make this form of the factor of 1 more and more complicated. And how will making this factor of 1 more complicated actually simplify the problem? I know that makes very little sense in English, but it makes a lot of sense in terms of mathematics. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we have the limit as z approaches negative k of z plus k times my ever so complicated version of 1, which is a z plus k term already times a z plus k minus 1 term. And I keep introducing terms all the way up to getting a z term at the end. And I have exactly the same structure in the denominator. So that's a z plus k times z plus k minus 1 all the way up to z and this thing is supposed to be multiplied by gamma z. Okay, and how exactly does that help? Well, we know the properties of the gamma function. We know that if we multiply z by gamma z, we get gamma z plus 1. So that means this thing absorbed into the gamma function would give me a gamma z plus 1 term. But wait, I also have a z plus 1 term here. I have a z plus 1 factor here. And z plus 1 times the new gamma z plus 1 would be gamma z plus 2. So I can keep absorbing things from the numerator into the gamma function, finally giving me the residues of the gamma function at z equal to negative k being the limit as z approaches negative k of z plus k times the gamma function evaluated at z plus, wait, once you get to this final z plus k term, 
you're going to get gamma z plus k plus 1, correct? Divided by everything in the denominator that I'm rearranging now as z times z plus 1 all the way up to z plus k. And we see the z plus k terms cancel out quite nicely. This means we're interested in the limit as z approaches negative k of gamma z plus k plus 1 divided by z times z plus 1 all the way up to z plus k minus 1. Now all that's left is to evaluate the limit. So as z tends to negative k, z plus k tends to 0. So that means we're left with gamma 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, we have negative k, uh, negative k plus 1 going down all the way to negative 1. And we can factor out negative 1 from the denominator. So that would give me negative 1 to the k, right? So that's negative 1 to the k in the denominator, but the reciprocal of negative 1 to the k is again just negative 1 to the k. Terribly sorry about that times gamma 1, which is 0 factorial, which is 1. And in the denominator, we're left with k. Factoring out the negative sign means that we now have k minus 1, and of course k minus 2, all the way up to a factor of 1. But we know what the expression in the denominator is, right? k is just a positive integer. So that means we have negative 1 to the k, times 1 by k factorial, which is, again, extremely cool. So we conclude that if you want the residue, the gamma function, at z equal to any non-positive integer that's written as negative k, where k is, of course, greater than or equal to 0, we have negative 1 to the k divided by k factorial. And the residues of the gamma function do arise in a few contour integrals from analytic number theory, which is a very interesting subject as well. I'm trying to study that these days. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.